Okay, I I have everything ready again. So let's uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this night, and thank you, Lord, that we can be here, that we can sit around your word and uh, just talk about it, visit with each other. Thank you, Lord, that we can be a body that's connected and that we can actually grow and live because we are connected to each other. Lord, I pray that you will help everyone that might be watching by a live stream tonight, that they will find somewhere where they can connect as well so that they can be part of a body. And if it be this one, then it's good. And if it's somewhere else, then that is good too. Lord, but we pray that you will open your word for us through your Holy Spirit, that we will understand, that we will apply it in our lives, and that we will be able to live it out as we continue in our lives. In Jesus' name we ask it, Lord. Amen. Okay, Ron, let's sing that nice song that you've got. <laughs> Tempted and tired, we're here all night to wander. Why it should be us all the day long while there are us. Never molested the wind of Father along the wall of power. Father along will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand. Death has come and taken our loved ones. It leaves our own so lonely and drear. When then we do wonder what others prosper, living so wicked year after year. Father. shall meet him in that bright mansion. We'll understand it all by and by. Father alone will know all about it. Father alone will understand Hear my brother. Thank you. Good song. Good song. Good song to remember. That is great. Okay, so we said last time that we're going to talk about that putting on and taking off and putting on thing tonight. Uh, so it's in Colossians chapter 3 and from verse 5. From verse 5, Colossians 3. I'll read the first part of it for us. I'm going to read up to verse 9. Therefore put death your me to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. 
Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with its deeds. And then he carries on and talk about the things that we need to put on. So uh, somebody read, read from verse 10 for us uh, and uh, read all the way to, uh, to verse 17, if you could, please. Yeah, yeah. And have you put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him? Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision, non -circum nor circumcision, barbarian, uh, well, I don't know what is that word? That's right? a big word. <laughs> Bond Skip and in. Free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. How far down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, please go, go on. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and demolishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace, in your heart to the Lord. And whosoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Yes, thank you. Uh, th this, um, this scripture is talking about things that should no longer be in your, should no longer be in your life and things that you should have in your life. And uh, what happened uh, uh, Friday night, we had a, uh, a chapel service for the Hope Springs and Pastor Shane uh, Silvers was the preacher and he preached about uh, what is in James and, and that faith without works is dead. And he did a very good job of, of explaining how, how works don't save you. You're saved by faith, but faith without works cannot exist because faith without works is dead. There must be works uh, to prove that your faith. So when we, when, we, when we read this and when I read this, I let my mind go a little bit and, and think because there is so many people today that preach the message of grace alone. And I don't preach about uh, actually putting off some things and taking up other things. I think we might even want to call that the process of sanctification, which is not just, uh, in, in, in my opinion, the, the work from God in your heart and sanctifying you, but also what you apply in your life so that you will be living a holy life unto God. So, so in, in, in many um, modern charismatic circles, it is not very popular because people say you are saved by grace and saved by grace alone and you can do whatever you want and you can, you can live whatever way you want and you can never lose your salvation and well, uh, I once had a, had a 
fairly interesting conversation with somebody who, who believed in that uh, in that doctrine and uh, this person said that it is impossible you can live absolutely whatever way you want and you're saved you're saved you've got eternal security you you're eternally saved and uh, I then asked him and and continued to pressure scriptures like this that says says this and then he, he said well if and, and it was very enlightening, really, what he said, because he was forced to say, being logical and being, uh, being uh, intelligent in his conversation, he was forced to say, well, if, if that what you say is true, it is not that he loses his salvation, he maybe never had salvation. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because that's exactly what I, what I was saying you know so so it's an interesting it's an interesting thing but regardless i was thinking about the scripture and then i remember a scripture that i want to read to us and and that is in matthew chapter uh matthew uh, chapter three I'll, I'll get it in a minute and i want to read it to you because i i think it's very important because jesus is the is this is speaking here and uh, and um, no it's actually John and he said to them yeah verse verse 8 brood of vipers who want you to flee from the wrath to come it was the people that were Pharisees and such coming to be baptized by John so it's Matthew 3 verse I read verse 7 who want you to flee from the wrath to come and then verse 8 says therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance you see so so there he said bear fruit worthy of repentance now the same scripture is repeated in Luke chapter 3 verse 8 you don't have to turn there but it's it's exactly the same scripture exactly the same words therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance and so the the fifth rule in bible study that we that we uh, said the fifth rule is that scripture must be supported by scripture we do not build a theology or a concept on just one scripture because if you build it on one scripture you you can you can really distort the word of god and you can really take horrible things out of it and and preach it as as the truth but if it's if it's supported by several scriptures then you know that it's something that you really need to give attention to so here we have two scriptures mark uh, sorry matthew chapter 3 8 luke chapter 3 8 numerous other scriptures like uh, Galatians chapter 5 and such that talk about about actually doing something laying down certain things and then putting on uh, something else so he uses an interesting concept here for me that he that there are some things that need to be put to death there are some things in in verse 5 therefore put to death your members which are on the earth and then he carries on fornication uncleanness etc and then he go on and because and he says that the rough the wrath of god is coming upon sons of disobedience and so on and then he talks about something else and he see, says now you yourselves are to put off all these so so some things need to be put to death and some things need to be put off why in the world do you think he uses those two terms one to death and one put off uh, I, 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 it's a real question that i'm asking because i'm thinking about it as well and as you talk i will continue to think about it so what do you think i'm thinking the deeds are past tense it's something that you've done that can't be changed. Yes. But to put off the way that you act can be changed. 
That is a good good explanation. I like that. You, you follow me? I yeah. Mean, the deed is done. Yeah. But when we change and we become, you know, a new man. The new behavior need to not include that. So you put exactly. that on. Although what's past is it's you're trying to leave behind you. Yeah. Anyone else? No, I think you pretty much pretty much said it. Said it. Mm -hmm. Because then um, and then after we do all that you, that's when you put on a new self. Correct. Then, then, yeah. So we, you're, we, you're getting rid of the old and you replace the new. Yeah. We, we'll, um, let's look at the things that he says that you need to put to death. It is fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the son of disobedience. I wonder to a certain extent also if yeah, those are things that, that is in the past, but I wonder if that those things might be deeply embedded, deeply embedded character traits that needs to be crucified, needs to be put to death. And then the new behavior, when you lay down the behavior of what comes out of those things are anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, lying, um, so, so, so it's, it, it, I don't know that it's important. It is just that I noticed that he called two things there, and that's why I brought it up. But I think Ron is very, uh, very close there with, with the behavior that comes from a unsaved character need to be laid off because because you have put to death the old character, the old mm -hmm. behavior, the old things that you cannot, like you say, you cannot change it, it happened. So you, lay, you, you have crucified that. So, and then he says that uh, then you need to put on things. Put on tender mercies, kindness, I'm in verse 12, meekness, humility, long-suffering, and then he explains long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, and then if you have a complaint, forgive, above all things put on love, the bond of perfection, and, and so on. So, uh, so we need to put on these new things. So it's literally like you strip yourself from certain things and then you put this on like new clothes. You, you take the old filthy rags, put it down, put on new clothes, and now you live. And I think this takes discipline, don't you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This doesn't come automatically. But, but I think once you are saved, I think once I think once you are saved, you have to be have, having discipline, but you're doing it out of love for the Lord. So again, it is you are bearing the fruit of repentance. Yeah. Uh, so, somebody uh, that I heard many many years ago. This is a long time ago, maybe maybe forty <laughs> maybe forty years ago or more. A, a preacher from from South America that I heard at a seminar that I attended and he used this example he said that um, if you have a, a teenage daughter and you have her in, she lives in the house with you and you you tell her that she needs to uh, that she needs to clean the kitchen then she's got an attitude about that because why does she need to clean the kitchen then when you get to a room, it's all messed up and filthy, and you say you need to pick up all your clothes from the floor. <laughs> you need to go wash it. You need to fold it. You need to put it away. And then uh, she gets an attitude about that. So, so she doesn't want to do it because her motivation is from outside. And, 
and then he said then she grows up and she becomes a little older and and she she meets a, a young man that she really likes and is really interested in and they go out once or twice and then she invites him home and say come have a meal with my family on Friday night. He said then Friday afternoon you don't have to say anything to her. She cleans up the kitchen, she go clean up her room, she sweeps the floor, she dusts, she makes everything right perfectly because her motivation has changed. First it was motivation from you outside. Now she's in love with this boy. She wants to impress him. So all of a sudden she do all of those things. And then he brought it in relation to this, to us being saved. Because when we looked at the, when we look at this, it looks like it's hard to do it. When you just look at it, it's hard to do it. But when you have repented, and when you love the Lord, and you want to live to for God, it's not hard because your motivation has changed, and you do it from because you. You have an in, inner desire and inner motivation to do it. So it's not a hard thing. So for a Christian, it's an easy thing. For a Pharisee type person, it's a very hard thing. <laughs> because that old man is still very much alive. And the motivation is from outside. While if it's the love of the Lord, it's, it's, it's motivation from the, from the inside. So does that make any sense to you guys? It makes sense to me. Good. Well, a, a lot of those people were where it said before puffed up with themselves. Yes. yes. Rather than trying to, you know, be humble and, and have humility yeah. and realize that it isn't about yourself. It's about, yes. you know, trying to, to be at one with the Lord. That's right. And do what, what he wants. It's all about him. It's all about him. Here's an, a scripture that I skipped, and I skipped it on purpose. Uh, verse, verse 11 says, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circum circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all in all. And I, I think this is something that... that our society today need to know. Now, I'm talking about about everybody needs to know it. I'm not, not talking about one. I mean everybody needs to know it. Because the, 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 the separation and the hatred that people are, are allowing to breed in their hearts because of of different races, different political views, different things, is going to hurt our country more than what we can imagine. And I think it is necessary that we know that in Christ we are all on one level, that there is no difference. You know, coming from a country, South Africa, which was in the world, in the, in the view of the world, a horrible country that oppressed black people. That, that was the general view that the world, world had of South Africa. Uh, and, and when I became a, a missionary to the Zulu people, who was one of the tribes uh, that live in the southern part of Africa in, in, on the east coast, uh, you may have seen videos movies like Chaka Zulu and Zulu, just Zulu and so on. So they are, they are a, uh, I became a, a missionary to them and, and I had to, to, uh, had to uh, um, look at myself and, and I had to uh, investigate my own feelings and my own, my own uh, attitude and preconceived ideas and such. And then I, I came to the realization, working, working among these people, I came to the realization that 
when I cut myself, because I work with them in the field, when I cut myself, I bleed red. And one of them, if they cut themselves, they bleed red. <laughs> and I realized that color is just skin deep. So I started asking myself, what is the color of a soul? A soul has no color. So, so I could put all of that feelings away and to one, one side and say, I'm a man, you are a man. I need God to forgive my sin. You need God to forgive your sin. And God will cleanse us with his blood and he will make us white as snow for me, and it, which I am not, and he's going to clean you and make you white as snow, which you are not right now. But when we stand in front of Christ, we stand on level ground. We are just the same. And I think, I think that message should be the message of the church. And I think that we should, I, I always, almost want to say we should fearlessly address the racism that comes out of, out of black communities today. And we fearlessly should address racism that comes out of white communities today. And we should fearlessly address racism that comes out of brown communities today. Because as Christians, we cannot allow that to happen. We have to say, you've got to stop that. Let's stop talking about the differences. Let's talk about how we can all live together. I, I think the church got a message that we cannot neglect. And sometimes we are a little bit hesitant to do it, and we are a little bit scared. I'm talking as a leader. I'm talking as a pastor. You're sometimes scared because you don't know if there's going to be uh, uh, feedback, if there's going to be pushback. But that's okay if there's pushback because as long as you've got the scripture that you are living by, I think it's important that, that, it, that we say uh, that there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, or free, but Christ is all in all. And then, and only then, can we live in what first 14 says, but above all things put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. And then he says, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with a grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. So that is uh, that is what I what I see in that in that scripture. We can uh, anyone else go ahead. <laughs> I spoke too much. <laughs> no, go right ahead. You know, I was thinking that mortify that kind of got my attention there when it says mortify. Okay. Okay. See, in other words, kill all this stuff. Mortify. You got to kill it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, why do you use Roundup? Yeah. You use it to kill the weeds. You got to yeah. kill all these weeds. Okay. You kill all this stuff. Then he comes down here and he says, "You got an empty spot there. It's empty. It's uh, we've killed all this thing. Now I'm going to come. I've, I've forgive you of your sins and all that, and we've cleansed ourselves. And now Christ." is going to come and he's going to replenish mm -hmm. your soul with mm -hmm. all this good stuff yeah. that he's got that we can use as a Christian on our journey and our walk to heaven. Absolutely. It is, it, the way you put it is good, Gene, because again, scripture with scripture, when you look at, when you look at Galatians chapter 5, these things that he mentioned here are things that we now will have. He calls them the fruit of the Spirit. So he put the seed of the Spirit in your life, and now it brings forth this fruit after you've used the roundup on all the other stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 
And that's when God forgives us for our sins, that's what he does. Yes. Yes. We can't do it within ourselves. Yeah. No. That's the reason he says, you know, when you first get saved, he talks about the milk. Yes. Because it, it, yeah, you need it to nourishes you along, but then yeah. after a while, you know, we get, yeah. like you uh, referred to the other night, we get to where we've got to have some steak and gravy. Yeah. 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 I agree. Now, Gene, you know more about this than what I do, probably. So let me ask you this. When, when people are talking about sanctification, explain sanctification to me, please. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know where I can really just sit here and say mm -hmm. I can explain sanctification. I understand that. But when I was sanctifying myself, I wanted to get rid of anything that was within me that I would I was afraid that might offend the spirit mm -hmm. or the Lord and if it was offending him in any way I wanted to get rid of it I, I, you know and yeah. I prayed and fasted about it you know yeah. and then kind of cleansed myself kind of step by step would you say that this process that we read here is that is almost the yeah, process start, of sanctification? Yeah. Your language, you clean up your language. Okay. You take all these foul words and these uh, swearing words and all that, you, yeah. you clean that up. You watch your conversation, uh, mm -hmm. who you have, when the conversation starts going off your way, you better move back yeah. out of the way. So, so, so I see all of these things because he said, "Put off anger, wrath, malice, mm -hmm. blasphemy, filthy language. Li don't lie to one another." So, so that is the process of sanctification that, in your case, you yes. said happened over a period of time. Yes. But the, was there an initial uh, a initial awareness or an initial uh, meeting with God, if I can put it that way, that? prompted that to happen or was it a natural outflow of your accepting the Lord as Savior? It, it was as me as accepting the Lord as my Savior. Okay. Because when I accepted the Lord as my Savior, I was a different person. I, I really was. I, yeah. I, the old Glenn, he was still Glenn. Yeah. His name. Yeah. He had that DNA in him. He didn't change. The DNA didn't change. But my spirit had changed. Yeah. I had a Holy Spirit, a godly spirit. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this devil type spirit, I guess, right. or whatever. I just yeah. if you want to clean up my conversation. Yeah. And I mean, I caught myself a time or two that, and I said, Look, look out of here, Lord. Forgive me. I, I, I'm, I'm not of this no more. That was not right. <laughs> yeah, it's not right. Yeah. And you'll be surprised that little conference right in here that yeah. it'll ring your bell. Yeah. It will. It'll ring your bell when you get somewhere into something that you don't supposed to do or be or whatever. And you better get away from it. Yeah. That's part of sanctification. You gotta move back, get away. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that because I see this process yeah. at work mm -hmm. and this process when you lay down and you put to death your members and you and you actually accept the Lord and you and you that's the first step and then you, yeah. you start start putting on certain things. I've seen it in various different people's lives over the years. The most dramatic one that I've ever seen was a was a man that uh, was a colonel in, in the South African army and if you know anything about armies, you know, you swear like a sailor because otherwise they think that you don't mean it. So it is. It is rough. It is very rough. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he got saved, and 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 the Lord really did something in his life. And he knew that he needed to put off certain things. And for him, it was a very painful process. He he went into the office in the morning, closed his door, and just spent the time with the Lord. Um, he, he, he's a, he was a friend of mine. He's with the Lord now. He passed away. Uh, but but it, over a period of two weeks, uh, a sanctification process happened in his life, which was unbelievable. 
He went from a hard, hard drinking, swearing uh, officer of the army to a soft, wonderful, loving, caring man of God. It, it was amazing. But the, the difference did not happen instantaneously. It happened in, in his life. It happened in a period of two weeks where he was in constant prayer. He cried like you would think he doesn't have any fluid in his body anymore and then he still cried. You know, because of all the all the stuff that he did. You need to understand the army life a little bit to oh, under, under, uh, understand. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's rough. So for two weeks that happened and then he came out of that and he was a completely changed man. So his salvation happened instantly. But the sanctification process took longer. Yeah. And yes. And then I've seen other people that the sanctification process do not take two weeks, but two months. Yeah. And for some other people, it take a year. But you can see a slow progression as they are going. We used to say, in, uh, in, in back then, we used to say that, that God takes a house where there's nothing in it because the father is a drunkard. He drinks everything away, and I sleep on the ground with a blanket, and, you know, that is true in some cases. In South Africa, it might be true here too. And they have nothing, they have no food. And then God changes those crates that they sit on as, as chairs. God changed that into a lounge suite. But what happens is the people are changing. They no longer waste their money on wasteful things like drugs, drinking, gambling, all that stuff. But now all of a sudden they have money to buy furniture. Next thing is they have the ability to buy a car. The next thing they start dressing better. And you would say, well, does that make them a Christian? No, it doesn't make them a Christian. The fact that they gave their lives to the Lord makes them a Christian. But those are the results of, those are the fruits of becoming a child of God. And they, and they all of a sudden change, their language change, they speak differently, they they start associating with different people and so on. And that's that process that I think that Paul is talking about here and that we might call uh, a process of sanctification, but that needs to happen in our lives. Well, the, and I think Paul was talking in here too, the Gentiles, Yes. they were type, a type of people like we are. Right? Yeah. And, and, and they were pretty rough people. That's you know, right. Just like we were. Yeah. Before God yeah. got a hold of me, I mean, I was, I wasn't a, a bad man, but I was bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know, he, I let him come into my life yeah. and my heart. Yeah, it's 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 the same thing with me. I was bad, but I was bad, bad. But I yeah. don't like to. I don't like to talk about it, and I don't want to uh, give the devil any credit for it. Uh, you know, but, but it needs to happen. That God needs to change you. You need to change if you your think language. The truth that comes into your heart. Yeah. You will see it change. Yes. You will. You because will. then you've got that inner motivation for it to change. Yeah. You will see it change. Like you said, though, sometimes something of those bad things might happen in your life, and then the Holy Spirit will will, like you said, ring your bell. Yeah. And then you go and you say, Lord, I, I admit I was wrong again. Because this side of the grave, we will never be perfect. No. Uh -uh. I, I got mad yesterday. You know, I mean, I'm not proud of it. But I, I got mad yesterday. And, and uh, it was something that, uh, that was on TV. And I felt, I felt the old man rising up in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I asked Gail, can I switch the channel, please? <laughs> so I switched the channel because I felt that rising up in me, you know, and, and then I realized it's wrong. I cannot allow that. So take that out of my life. I don't want to don't want to provoke that. And then 
said, Lord, forgive me, I, I know I'm wrong, but please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that happens. Yeah. Anyone else, anything you want to talk about or say, and then we'll call it a day. And above all these things, put on charity. Yes. If you've got that love there in your heart, yeah. and people know that you have got that love, yeah. and you're walking and you're talking, then, uh, I mean, that, that's, it's, it it's, makes all the difference. It's something about it. Yeah. They think you're genuine. Yeah. That's what makes you genuine. Yeah. Christ's love in your right. heart yeah. and you give it out to other people yeah. and when they, when you have a conversation with them and they walk away yeah. they feel like he, he's, a, he's true that's right he's that's very right. true when you yeah. know the love of God yeah absolutely because he he gave his love we, we can't even comprehend what love he gave yeah. his love yeah why can't we give just a little back to you? Absolutely. You, 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 yeah. and me. And Absolutely. We can yeah. whack that world. Cool. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for tonight, and thank you that you can speak in our hearts, and I know that tonight you did speak in our hearts. Lord, I pray for myself and for all of us here. I pray that you will pour out more of your love in our hearts so that, so that we will be able to be motivated to live a holy and a sanctified life, a dedicated life to you because of our love for you, because we love you, we want to be obedient, we want to be like you. Lord, and as you pour more of your love in our hearts and we we take it up and we put it on it will also be a love towards other people people that that sometimes we may have little patience for people that we sometimes don't even want to associate with or socialize with but that they will see the love of Christ coming through us to them and that it will make a change in their lives that we can spread the love that you have for sinners and the love that you had for us when we were still sinners, that we would be able to, to spread that love, that it will draw people closer to you. Lord, continue to work in our hearts. Uh, help us to live a holy life. Help us to live a dedicated life. Lord, you know each one of our weaknesses, and I do know that I have weaknesses, I have weak points, and I know that everyone else that, that listens does have weak points. Uh, but Lord, we know that when we are weak, you are strong. And you can help us in that. So Lord, uh, we pray that you will help us to see those weaknesses. And allow that not to trip us up. But allow that to drive us towards you. That you will be able to be our strength. Lord, help us. In that, in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen.